Hello, um, this is Mumbai Doug, and I just wanted to, first of all, thank you for responding to my response to your bitching part two video. Um, and I really do think uh, it's a good dialogue, uh, you know, listening to what you had to say helped me understand my position a little bit better as well. Um, and so I just wanted to expound on that just for a minute, and I'll try to keep this as brief as possible. Um, and I do think I understand where you're coming from. I mean, I understand the the whole end result is the same kind of uh, thing. We already have laws in place for these crimes that we're calling hate crimes now. Um, and I'm going to try, as hard as I can, <laughs> to uh, illustrate why I think hate crime really is different. Um, so and maybe I'll be successful at it, maybe I won't, and that's okay. Um, first of all, when I... The very first thing you said in your response was that I didn't think you were serious um, about your view on that, and that was a bad choice of words. It's not that I don't think that you're serious, it's that um, I have a hard time understanding why people don't recognize the difference between hate crime and regular crime, and that's really what I meant. I didn't mean to say, well, and I probably did say this, surely you can't be serious, um, and I know that's how it came across, but what I'm really trying to say is how can you not see it? So just to clear that up, um, I did I did use the examples of hate crime pertaining primarily uh, to people's race, sexual orientation, that kind of thing. Um, and then at the tail end of that, you said, "Well, what about Scott Peterson? Um, he murdered his wife because you know who knows why." Um, and I understand that the end result of that murder and any other murder, whether it be what we call a hate crime, the end result is the same. Yes. Uh, but I still think there's a distinction. Um, and I, at, at the end of this video, I'll summarize what I think is a good explanation of that distinction uh, from the New York State Legislature. But, um, you know, hate crimes are far more reaching uh, than just an individual crime upon a person. They're more reaching in the sense that it impact a hate crime can impact a whole community, a whole city, um, a whole social group. Uh, when one when one crime is committed against uh, and just for the purpose of this video I'll use the gay community. When someone is gay bashed to the extent that they're beat up or, you know, murdered or something like that because they're gay, then the whole gay community lives in fear. Um, and so that's a different kind of crime because you're not just committing the crime on the person, you're committing the crime on society. And that's why we have different laws for it. And that's maybe not the best example, and I'm oversimplifying it, but... Um, and I also wanted to mention about your comment saying that people that claim to be the least prejudicial are the most prejudicial um, because, you know, they make everything into a big thing um, that we try to, I guess I'm putting myself in that group, that we try to put uh, put a label on everything as, oh, it wasn't just a murder, it was a murder of a, a black man, and so it's different, or... But you really have to look at each of those cases individually. Sometimes it's warranted uh, to put that hate label on it, and sometimes it isn't. Um, because sometimes a black person is murdered, not because they're black, but because of some other reason. Um, the whole black community shouldn't live in fear uh, for one because one person was killed. But when one black person is killed because they're black, then the whole black community lives in fear. That's the difference. A black person is murdered as part of a drug deal gone wrong. That's different than a black person being murdered because they're black. It just is, and that's, I think, where we're probably going to disagree fundamentally. Um, and I really do understand uh, your point, I think. Um, and it's not that I'm not trying to understand you and that I'm some staunch, you know, this is the way it is. It's not. is. I'm not like that. Um, so I'm trying to understand your side. Um, and so to say it's all the same crime, I don't agree with that in all cases, I guess is my bottom line there. Um, 
He also said that we don't have a special crime for, or we don't have a crime for spousal murders. We don't have a crime for child murders, um, but we do. <laughs> um, we have dom domestic violence laws. Um, we have criminal domestic violence laws that are different than if I just get in a fight with my neighbor, who's not a domestic partner of mine. Um, there, di there are, there is different legislation for that. Um, there are also different. Uh, penalties for murdering a child than there are for murdering an adult. Society has deemed the murder of a child different than murdering an adult. And I, maybe you don't agree with that because a murder is a murder, but society at some level does think they're different or we wouldn't have that legislation. Um, so I just wanted to make those statements about spousal murders and child murders. Um, we do have speci special laws for special circumstances. Uh, our laws are not a one-size-fits-all thing, um, and they shouldn't be. Uh, there are some countries that do treat uh, law as one-size-fits-all and crime as one-size-fits-all, and we're fortunate enough, as imperfect as our justice system is, we are fortunate enough to have a justice system that recognizes individual uh, cases as such. And I am already at six minutes, so I'm going to read uh, just a little blurb about uh, the New York State Legislature and hate crime. So this is all um, just information I found online. So when it enacted the Hate Crimes Act of 2000, the New York State Legislature included legislative findings that offer a survey of the various arguments from hate crime legislation. The legislature specifically found that, quote, hate crimes do more than just threaten the safety and welfare of all citizens. They inflict on victims incalculable physical and emotional damage and tear at the very fabric of free society. Crimes motivated by uh, hatred toward particular groups not only harm individual victims, but send a powerful message of intolerance and discrimination to all members of that group to which the victim belongs. Hate crimes can and do intimidate and disrupt entire communities and vitiate the civility that is essential to a healthy democratic process. In a democratic society, citizens cannot be required to approve of the beliefs and practices of others, but must never commit criminal acts on account of them. Current law does not adequately, adequately recognize the harm to public order and individual safety that hate crimes cause. Therefore, our laws must be strengthened to provide a clear recognition of the gravity of hate crimes and the compelling importance of preventing their occurrence. Accordingly, the legislature finds and declares that hate crimes should be prosecuted and pun punished with appropriate severity. And that's all to say that hate crimes are differentiated uh, from regular crime despite the fact that their end result is the same. But with hate crimes, the end result stretches beyond the victim. Um, what we would call the victim is stretches into society, and therefore there's an additional punishment or special um, recourse for that action. So I don't know how well I'm articulating myself on this, but yeah, it's perfectly clear in my head, of course. Um, again, I appreciate your response. I appreciate your opinion. And thanks for letting me respond to uh, what you had to say. All right, bye.